it's another month, so let's look back at all the... So let's look back at all the films and TV shows I watched in the month of February. Starting with Ed Wood. I start the month by watching a bit of Tim Burton. And overall, this film was really solid. I didn't actually realise this was a biopic until like 20 minutes into the film. And once I realised it was a biopic, I became really intrigued by this person and how he managed to get all these films made. It really reminded me of Dolomite Is My Name, where it's someone who has an unbelievable amount of ambition and manages to make it big by the end. Although Edward doesn't make it big in a good way. Just the performances, especially from Johnny Depp, are just so good. And I felt like it brought you back into this time period where it takes place with the cinematography and also the use of black and white, which I think work really well. Overall, it's a really solid biopic. I give it an 8.5. And then I watched Don't Breathe. The director of this film is directing the new Alien film, so I thought I'd give this a watch. And this is one of the most suspensefully effective films that I've seen. There's just so many creative set pieces in this film that make for so many tense moments. I thought the main characters, along with the scary blind man, were fleshed out surprisingly well, and you can understand everyone's motives, even though some are better than others. This also has some surprisingly good cinematography, with some long shots that reveal stuff, and just build the atmosphere of this house. It's just a very short and sweet horror film, with just such a well-written villain. I give it an 8. And then watch Interstellar. This is the last Christopher Nolan film that I have to watch before I've completed its filmography, and this was just a beautiful film. Everything from the cinematography to the story was just beautiful. I didn't know Matthew McConaughey could put in such a great performance. I love how these characters are flushed out, and how everything falls into place perfectly in the end, and how odd bits from the start come back full circle. I do think there are some overly epic scenes that go on for a bit too long, and some of the dialogue, especially on the ship, got very repetitive and a bit boring. But apart from that, I think it's just one of Nolan's most emotional and beautiful films. I give it a 9.5. And then I watch Princess Mononoke. This is probably the most controversial opinion I've had on this channel since given The Last Samurai 5. I'm just gonna put it in the middle of the road and just say fine. But I just found this to be very boring. I'm sorry. I felt like I understood the story and I found the characters to be very likeable, but it just lacks the charm of the previous Miyazaki films that I saw before this. And this massive epic story just doesn't invest me, which even upset me because I was trying so hard to be invested. I like the whole mythology aspect with all of these unique creatures and talking animals. And the animation is just so phenomenal, obviously, as always. But again, I just couldn't get into this story. I'm sorry. I give it like a 7.5. And then watch Spirited Away. Again, this is another one that I absolutely hated. It's like a 0 out of 10. I'm, so I'm joking. This one was almost perfect. It just had that Miyazaki charm back. I just love the world building in this film and it does a great job at making this world so whimsical and wacky and weird. I didn't find the main girl to be that likeable at the start. I thought she's a bit of a wimp to be honest, not gonna lie. But the way they develop a character over the course of the film just makes her such a great character to follow and I just loved it. The story is also great as well and I was very invested in it. I feel like it has similar themes to My Neighbor Totoro with this magical world that can disappear and the adults can't see it. I just love this film. I don't know what else to say. I give it a 9.5. And then what Howl's Moving Castle. This is another Miyazaki film that I like more than Princess Mononoke. It just has that signature charm, along with a pretty investing story that I liked. I didn't think the main character was all that likeable, and the film did kind of lose me in the third act, but this world is just so built out again, and the side characters are great, especially the fire guy. This is probably the weirdest Miyazaki film I've seen as well. Got all these witches and this war going on and a bunch of curses. It is a lot, but I think it's balanced out surprisingly well. I liked it. I give it an 8. Then I watched Ponyo this is probably the most cute film out of Miyazaki's filmography. It just feels so innocent with a really simple concept that's just executed so well. The relationship between the boy and the fish is just really fun and it's just charming throughout the whole runtime. I do think maybe it's a bit too childish at points and I found myself going on my phone a few times and feeling bad that I'm going on my phone whilst I'm watching a film and then I turn my phone off and I realise that I haven't really missed out on anything. I give it like an 8. And then I watch American Fiction. This is a Best Picture nomination so I thought I'd give it a watch and it's a really surprisingly solid comedy with a surprisingly emotional core. I do think there is some tonal whiplash in this film at some points where it struggles to find a balance between being poignant and emotional and being a comedy but it did keep me engaged the entire time. 
game with its clever writing and a really likeable performance from Jeffrey Wright. I also think the concept is really fun and I really like how it plays into white people being just a little bit racist. I think it definitely deserves to be nominated for Best Picture. I give it a 9. And then I finished Futurama with Season 5 and this was just such a solid final season. Some episodes in there were some of the best in the whole series, especially Jurassic Park and The Sting. Those episodes were just phenomenal. It's just so emotional as well. I did think the second half of the season was way too Bender centric and he's not my favourite character in the show so he did get on my nerves a bit. But overall it's just a great final season before it got revived again four years later. But I'm just going to leave it here for now. I give it a 9. And then I watched Anatomy of a Fall. This is the best picture nomination at the Oscars again so I gave it a watch. And this is extremely solid. The lead performance in this is phenomenal and I love how for a majority of this film you don't know if she did it or not. I was just intrigued the entire time with where the story would go and what questions would be answered. I just really love how more and more of this family's relationship is revealed in this film throughout the court scenes and how it makes you root for one character more than another. It's just an amazing drama and I feel like it's very rewatchable as well as you can judge the main characters reactions and responses two different ways which I just think is amazing. I give it a 9. And then I rewatched Whiplash. I bought this film on 4k a few months ago. I was dying to give it a rewatch. It was like in my top 5 films of all time and rewatching it again it's still in my top 5 films of all time. Fletcher is just one of the best characters in film ever. I just love how it shows all these different aspects to his character even little scenes when he's talking to the child in the hallway. It just shows that he's like anyone else but he just cares so much for the art of jazz that he's willing to push anyone past their limit and telling it from Andrew's point of view and how he endures this abuse and grows to appreciate Fletcher's character more and more as the film progresses leading to the finale which is probably my favourite finale in film ever. It's just an unbelievably great film and I'm not even taking into account the amazing cinematography which adds so much smoothness to a scene when the camera pans back and forth between characters. I could just talk all day about this film. I love it so much. It's a 10.5 and then watch The Wind Rises. There's the final Miyazaki film that I watched and this film feels like such a passion project for Miyazaki and the filmmakers involved. You can just tell a lot of people working on this film really like planes and I like being able to see that passion through the film. But I'm not really into planes though so I didn't get into this film as much as I wanted to. I do like how mature this film is for a Ghibli film. It deals with a lot of themes of war and death and I do like the main character and his relationship with this woman. I also like the stuff with the dreams and how wondrous it was and I did leave this film feeling a sense of emotion. So yeah I think it's pretty good. I give it an 8. And then I watched Red, White and Royal Blue. <laughs> I decided to make this my Valentine's Day watch and it was alright. When it's trying to be a comedy it's pretty enjoyable and when it's trying to be serious it's unbelievably cheesy. The relationship between these two main characters is fine and how they have to hide it is pretty fun. It's just very textbook rom-com. Like for basically no reason at all the prince just decides to leave the other guy so he can have tension in the third act. I really don't like some of the shots in here as well. There's some shots in here that are just lit and positioned like a Hallmark film. I do like Stephen Fry as the king though so I give it a 6. And then I finished watching The Bear Season 1. I really wanted to watch this show since everyone's raving about it. It recently won a few Grammys I think and this was just such a great first season. I think it took a few episodes to find its footing and really stand out but I was still very invested in the story going on and how they could turn this restaurant around. And then the last two episodes especially the penultimate one were just almost perfect with how they were paced and just the performances from everyone were on point especially for the one take episodes. I just felt like I was there and feeling the stress of this business. The camera work was just so good. It's just such a great episode. There's just some really likeable characters as well. Some of them grow me quicker than others but I like them all at the end and I was just so excited to see where they took it for season 2. I'd give it an 8.5. And then I watched the Grand Tour Sand Job. It's another Grand Tour special which I just really liked. I definitely think it's an improvement over the last special. First of all it's longer than any of their other specials at 2 hours and 20 minutes but I was kept entertained by the trio the whole run time. There were some moments in this film where I genuinely felt tense like when they were trying to get across the river and obviously the banter between these three is just so funny. Again like I've mentioned with the past specials I do think the scripted moments are extremely distracting and it frustrates me how they try to play it off as something that's actually happening but I do think this special played into it a bit more 
more to where some moments were so overly fake that I just couldn't help but laugh. Most noticeably, Hammond driving into a minefield. I just had a fun time with it. I give an 8.5. And then I watched The Iron Claw. I heard great things from this, and after watching it, I'm just shocked that I wasn't nominated for any Oscars. It's just such an emotionally powerful film with a really investing story. I've never actually seen Zac Efron in anything apart from the Lorax, but he did a phenomenal performance in this film, along with all the brothers. It's just devastating seeing this family fall apart, mainly due to this father selfishly pushing this sport onto his children. There's just some genuinely heartbreaking moments in here that just has so much emotional weight to them because of how much these characters were built up. It's just a phenomenal film. I give it a 9.5. And then I watched The Beekeeper. This is the first 2024 film that I watched and it's just an inferior version of John Wick. But it was just so fun. Jason Statham was just so great in this role of an unstoppable force but as a result there's just absolutely no tension here whatsoever because you know he's literally getting out of any situation even john wick loses and gets injured but this guy just shrugs off anything there are some action sequences that are pretty well done but there are some that feel like something from john wick but just not as good like the scene with the glass cabinets i know i'm criticizing this film a lot but i had such a great time with it and i was just constantly entertained i give it a seven and then i watch the 2024 BAFTAs. I'm pretty sure this is like the first time I've actually seen the BAFTAs since like 2019 and it actually wasn't that bad. I had actually seen a good amount of the films nominated this time and I think a majority of the awards were deserved. David Tennant was not a bad presenter as well. There were just some great speeches in here though. A big standout being Divine Joy Randolph who I was really happy to see winning Best Port and Actor. It was a good show. I'm not really going to rate it because it's just an awards show but yeah. Then I watched The Good Dinosaur. I wanted to watch all the Pixar films that I missed out on. And this one was alright. I really liked the relationship between this dinosaur and the cavemen. And there were some really funny and cute moments involving them. And the animation does look really good. Even though I felt like the cartoonish design of the dinosaurs clashes with like the realistic environments a lot. The story is just painfully generic and the ending just felt a little bit unsatisfactory. Even though I thought it was a happy ending. I like the voice acting especially from the guy from The Big Lebowski. But I just found it overall to be a bit boring. I give it like a 6.5. And then watch Soil. Soil? What am I saying? And then watch Soul. And it's just one of Pixar's best, in my opinion. I thought the concept was so great. And it just reminded me of one of those classic Pixar films like Up and Wally, where it just has such an intriguing story with a likable main character. It's just paced extremely well as well. And I like how poignant and emotional it gets near the end. There's just some great voice acting in here as well, obviously mainly from Jamie Foxx. You've also got Graham Norton in here, which I wasn't expecting, and he's really fun in here. It's just a memorable and fun film that, again, I think is one of Pixar's best. I give it a 9.5. And then we got another banger on our hands right here. We got La La Land. This is from the same director as Whiplash and I originally brought it on 4k so you know I was desperate to give this a watch. Going in I knew it was a musical as I've said before. I'm not the biggest fan of musicals but this film kind of made me love musicals. I just love how this story is told and how it shows the ups and downs of the relationship. You just got some standout performances in here from Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone and they just elevate this film so much with how much they had to learn to do for this film like dancing and singing playing piano. I do think maybe some of the music sequences went on for a bit too long, especially the opening one, which I do think felt slightly out of place. But the rest of the film is basically perfect, and I just love the emotional gut punch of the ending. I give it a 9.5. And then I watched The Zone of Interest. This is another Best Picture nomination that I wanted to check out, and overall I really liked it. Obviously the subject matter and the time period it was set in is very bleak, and this film reflects that extremely well. This film has some of the most standout sound design that I've seen in a film. It's just so haunting, and the fact that all you can do is hear it makes it even more haunting. This is very much a slow burn film and I do think that some shots go on for way too long but I do think the story points and the horror of it all just set in a little bit more. There were some moments where the film drug a lot and it doesn't really give the family that much character development. Probably because the film obviously doesn't want you to sympathise with them because because they're Nazis. I thought it's a very effective film with a really interesting ending. I'll give it an 8. And then I watched All of Us Strangers. This got nominated for a few BAFTAs and it's probably the most depressingly, emotionally devastating film of last year and I just love it. First of all, I love the 80s and I used to watch repeats of Top of the Pops all the time so I love the soundtrack. I love the themes of not letting go of someone and how falling in love with someone can like open this door from your past. It's just so interesting and I love how it's 
it's done with the mom and the dad and how you don't really know what's going on for a lot of it some scenes are part of a trip sequence some scenes are part of a dream and then some scenes feel like it's actually happening and maybe something paranormal is going on i was just hanging off most of the dialogue in this film especially with the mom and dad as the main character is desperately trying to spend more time with them i do think the relationship with the main character and his boyfriend is not as investing but i do love where they take it with the ending andrew scott just does such a phenomenal performance and i'm just shocked he wasn't nominated for an oscar i just love this film i'll give it a 9.5 and then i rewatched deadpool actually recently i got a deadpool controller holder for my xbox controller but yeah i rewatched this film for Deadpool 3 obviously, Deadpool and Wolverine, and this is just as fun as I remember. I've heard some people say that it's not aged that well looking back on it, and there are some jokes that I do feel are very awkward, or maybe go on for a bit too long, but I still love it. The breaking of the fourth wall in this film is done so well, and there are some generally well written jokes in it, and moments that come back around in the final act. I do think the flashback scenes are more investing and well written than the events that are currently taking place in the film. I just think the origin story is done very well. Deadpool can get a bit annoying with his quips as well, especially in the final act. But overall, it's so fun and it's just endlessly rewatchable in my opinion. I give it an 8. And then I watched Panic Room. I just felt like watching a bit of David Fincher, so I watched this film. Overall, I don't think it's his best film, but it's pretty solid. I do think it kind of tensed me out, if that's the right phrase. There were just too many on the edge of your seat moments in the first half, that by the second half, I was just so numb to it and I didn't really care about the plot anymore. I do like the two leads and the young Kristen Stewart in this film. It kind of reminds me of young wearing a rider in Beetlejuice. I do like the infamous cult leader Jared Leto in this film as well and how over the top his performance was. I do think the ending was a bit predictable and generic and I didn't find it as investing as I wanted to. But overall, it's pretty good. I give it a 7.5. And then I rewatched Doom. I rewatched this part two, obviously, which I've watched by the time I'm recording this. And I did an unscripted movie review on if you want to check that out. The first time I watched this, I wasn't really the biggest fan of it. And I found it to be a bit boring. And after rewatching it, I kind of feel the same way. It reminds me a lot of Andor, where I respect the filmmaking aspects so much. And I love aspects of it, like the interesting technology, like the shields and the whole stuff with the voice and that. But I just can't get invested in the story. And as a result, I just found it be a bit of a slog. I give it like a 7.5. And then I watched Poor Things. This is the last Best Picture nomination that I had to watch before I completed the list. And overall, I loved it. First of all, I just love the style of this film, the cinematography with the wide shots and the interesting zoom-ins just bring you into this world. And I just love the visuals and how it kind of shows this world from Ella's point of view through these visuals. The performances from everyone here are phenomenal. You've got Mark Ruffalo absolutely hamming it up. Willem Dafoe puts in a very odd performance as a scientist which is actually more subtle than a lot of his other performances and then obviously you've got Emma Stone who plays this character perfectly as someone with a child's mind in a woman's body who slowly over the course of film turns into a woman's mind in a woman's body and she manages to traverse and change her physical movements and vocabulary as she begins to mature. I just love the many adventures and character arcs her character goes on and overall it's just almost perfect. Maybe some scenes were a bit too weird but apart from that it's great. I forgot to mention it's really funny too. There's so many comedically perfect moments. And I just can't stop raving about this film. I give it a 9.5. And then I watched Lady Bird. I've been wanting to watch this film for a while. And it turned up on Prime. So I gave it a watch. This is by the same director as Barbie. Which is a film that I liked a lot. And I really like this film as well. I just love the coming of age aspect of this film. And how the story feels very simple. But so complex at the same time. Lady Bird as a character isn't all that likeable at the start. But I like how she's constantly experimenting and growing as a person over the course of the film. You've got some really fun side characters in here as well, especially Timothy Chalamet's character, who's just such an over-the-top rebel, and it's just so funny. I just love the story, and it has a pretty emotional climax to it that works really well. I'll give it like an 8.5. And then the final thing I watched last month was The Bear Season 2. This is just a phenomenal season of television. I think it started off similar to season one where I was interested in what was going on but I just didn't think it was picking up enough and then Fishers just blew me away. I thought that episode was perfect and it had so much tension and emotion to it. I thought the episodes that followed after that were great as well. The finale was just so well shot and so well written. It felt like a longer version of that episode in season one. The second half is just so good in my opinion that it just cancels out the not amazing pacing of the first half. I give it a nine. So that's everything that I watched in the month of February 2024. Um, I'm not actually currently watching anything. Yeah.